I'm George Lepp, Canon Explorer of Light, professional nature outdoor photographer. We're here at Oregon's Silver Falls State Park. We're going to spend the day here with Canon's new 5DS and 5DSR cameras to give you an idea how to get the most quality out of a camera with 50.6 megapixels in it. Uh, in the past, landscape photographers used medium format cameras and large format cameras in order to get every single detail out of the landscape that was in front of them. Since the digital age, they've now switched to medium format cameras of very high megapixel rates. We're actually able now with 50.6 megapixels in these cameras to match them in resolution, but we have the versatility of a lot of different lenses. We can go all the way from 8 millimeter fisheye, 11 to 24 millimeter rectilinear lenses, tilt shift lenses, many different very high resolution zoom lenses all the way out to telephoto lenses out to 800 millimeters. So we have great versatility, very much lighter in weight, and also a fraction of the cost of a medium format camera. The 5DS and the 5DSR are similar cameras, the only difference being that the 5DS has a low pass filter, which takes away the mores. The 5DSR has a secondary filter, which cancels the low pass filter and gives us just a little bit better fine detail. We're here on the trail going down to South Silver Falls. This falls here behind us is 177 feet tall. And unless you have people walking behind it, you really don't even understand the size of this. Now the thing that we're going to do here is we're going to try to get as much quality out of this camera as possible. And the reason is that when you have 50 megapixels, you're going to be looking very, very closely at these images. So if we're not exactly on focus, if we're not extremely sharp without any movement in the camera, then it's all for nothing. Number one, you've got to have a tripod that is very sturdy a good ball head or a tripod head that you're familiar with that's going to lock it into place. I've got a cable release on here that is going to allow me to take the shots without touching the camera. This is pretty important. The other thing is we want to lock up the mirror and in this case we'll just use live view that locks up the mirror automatically and then there's a secondary thing that most people don't know about and it's called silent mode one and in silent mode one we're getting rid of that last mechanical feature in the camera that could possibly give you any vibration by having that taken care of there is nothing in the camera that's going to give us vibration the rest of it now is based upon having exactly focused where we need to be and we're going to use a loop to do that the next thing is is to go to live view and what you're seeing now is exactly what is going to the sensor and that is going to give us the very best chance to get the sharpness the way we want it and the focus the way we want it. We can then blow up the image by going to the little magnifier here. I'm going to use a loop. This loop isn't very much in the way of magnification, but it gets rid of the extraneous light. And by going onto the back of the LCD and focusing while I'm looking through it, I'm actually in manual focus. I can put that focus exactly where I want it. If we don't have exact focus, if we have any vibration whatsoever, we're not going to have the image that can blow up to the size that the camera gives us the capability of. So we have everything the way we want it. We choose the shutter speed. We'll talk a little bit about shutter speeds later. But in this case, I'm going to go to an eighth of a second, and I have it set at f11. Some people will want to have a lot of depth of field. You go to f22, and what happens is we get a thing called diffraction and we don't get the sharpness that's possible with that particular lens. By backing down to f11, we get the very best capability that the, whatever lens or optic we have in the camera. It gives us pretty much the depth of field we need, but it also gives us the very best sharpness. So at this point, eighth of a second at f11, I've got a, a fairly low ISO so that we get the best quality. And if I fire the camera, that is the photograph. It's gonna be perfectly sharp. It's gonna be focused right on the money. We can then go to and look at the histogram and know that we are not uh, having any problem with the whites. We're not having any problems with the blacks. So everything here should be just about perfect. We should be able to blow this image up to a very large size. I, on a regular basis, take images from this camera and go to 40 by 60 inches and have all kinds of detail. But what if we really need a really big print, a long print? This lends itself to a panorama, a very tall vertical. I've switched now to a 100 to 400 millimeter. I'm about 135 millimeters. And I'm gonna take this in a series of pictures, starting at the bottom 
And as I move up on the waterfalls, I'll just overlap by about 20, 30 percent with, with each of the shots, keeping it in the middle. When I get to the point where the waterfall, where the people are behind the waterfalls, what I want to do is hopefully have somebody that stops right there so I have size relationship. I will then continue and take another series of shots until I get all the way to the top and I'll be up, to, up at that area right there. And because of the dynamic range of these cameras, we're actually going to be able to pull most of that detail out of the top of the waterfalls. We'll have six images slightly overlapping. When you bring this together and put it together in Photoshop or, or other software, we can make a huge print. We can be 40 inches wide by 80, 90, or 100 inches tall and tremendous amount of detail. I'm at North Silver Falls, which lends itself perfectly to showing how the 5DS, 5DS arc can render water in different ways by using different shutter speeds. I'm taking shots at 1 3,000th of a second. That's going to stop the water dead in its tracks as it's coming down the falls. We're also going to try what we would call a normal shutter speed, which is like a 90th of a second. And the water is kind of rendered kind of phony, and it's not the way we would normally see water or perceive it. By going to one and a half seconds, what we can get is this milky look as the water flows during the time of the exposure. And that's the way I perceive water, and that's the way I think it looks the best. Landscape photography has always been about capturing the most detail possible. With cameras like the 5DS and 5DSR and their amazing 50.6 megapixel resolution, photographers are able to capture that detail with maximum versatility at a minimum price. I hope you've been able to take away some new landscape techniques and feel ready to take your photography to the next level.